Yay! Deborah and I are here today. Yay! We're figuring out these machines and we're doing it like champs. <laughs> oh gosh. Maybe not today so much. But here we go. I have stories today all about lions. I've been thinking about lions lately. I don't know why. Maybe because I came across a good story. <laughs> so, lions are real animals. They do live in California, but they don't look like that lion with the giant mane that you see from Africa. They are mountain lions or cougars or pumas when they live over here in the United States. So, they have a different name, but they're still lions. And they are close by. So, we'll read about some of them. We'll read made-up stories about them. <laughs> All right, we're going to shake our sillies out first, though. We need some exercising, right? Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. Okay, stand up with me. Stand up, stand up. Here we go. All right, go. There we go. I'm going to shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. And wiggle my wiggles away. I'm gonna clap, clap, clap my crazies out, clap, clap, clap my crazies out, clap, clap, clap my crazies out and wiggle my waggles away. I'm gonna jump, jump, jump my jiggles out, jump, jump, jump my jiggles out, jump, jump, jump my jiggles out and wiggle my waggles away. I'm gonna yawn, yawn, yawn my sleep. She's out, stretch, 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 my stretch, she's out, stretch, 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 my stretch, she's out and wiggles, my waggles away. Go again. I'm gonna shake, shake, shake my sillies out, shake, shake, shake my sillies out, shake, shake, shake my sillies out and wiggle, my waggles away. My Yay! Now I'm ready. Yay! Okay. Whew. All right. Let's see what we know about lions. Lions aren't animals that you have as a pet. And sometimes they live in places like zoos. There have been some good documentaries about them so you can see what a real lion looks like. Gosh, they, they are bigger than us, so we have to respect them for sure. Oh, I don't need my... <laughs> I'm being careful without my mask. I'm trying not to breathe on Deborah. Okay, so this first book is a book that is from my childhood 100 years ago, and it's one of my favorite books in the world. And it's by the author Don Freeman, and he also wrote Corduroy about the bear with the corduroy pants and he also wrote Beady Bear and many many other books he's from California he lived in Santa Barbara and this book is called Dandelion Dandelion the Lion by Don Freeman and the pictures on this are sort of they're not that colorful um, there's only two colors here that he used to draw with so they're not very bright <laughs> but they're sweet all right, here we go. On a sunny Saturday morning, Dandelion woke up, stretched, and yawned, and jumped out of bed. <sighs> After doing his daily exercises, Dandelion looked out the window, and he blinked his eyes, and he said, I wonder if the mail has come. He put on his sweater, and he went outside to the mailbox. There was a letter and it was written in fancy gold ink. Gosh, look at that handwriting. Can you read that? It's hard, isn't it? It's all swirly and curly. It's cursive writing. It says, 
Dear Dandelion, you are invited to my tea and taffy party on Saturday afternoon at half past three. Come as you are. Sincerely, Jennifer Giraffe. Oh, Dandelion was very excited. Why, that's today, he said. It's a good thing I plan to get a haircut. <laughs> oh. As soon as he had washed and dried his breakfast dishes, he made his bed nice and neat. He ran down the street to the barber shop. Lou Kangaroo had a chair waiting for him. First, he trimmed Dandelion's hair. And then he gave him a shampoo. Woohoo! Look at that. Dandelion thought that he should have a manicure too. The manicure is um, where they fix your fingernails and make them neat and clean. Mm. Oof. When Lou Kangaroo had finished, Dandelion looked a bit foolish. His mane was frizzy and fuzzy and completely unrulish. Maybe a wave would help, Lou suggested, showing him a picture in the latest fashion magazine for lions. Hmm. Dandelion agreed. This was exactly what he needed. So Lou went about curling his mane. He looked magnificent. But now Dandelion thought that he really should wear something more elegant than a sweater to a party. Mm. Oops. This jacket is the very newest style, said Theodore the tailor, and it just fits you. All you need now is a cap and a cane. Happy Crane will be glad to help you. Gosh, how does he look now? Pretty snazzy, huh? Hmm. What a dapper dandy he had suddenly become. It's nearly half past three, said Dandelion. It's time to get something for my hostess. Hmm, he's gonna bring something to the party. Hmm. Hmm. A bouquet of dandelions would be perfect. He knew this tall door very well, having been there many times before. <laughs> he rang the bell, ding dong. And when Jennifer Giraffe opened the door, she looked very surprised. Yes, she said. What can I do for you? <laughs> Why, I've come to your party, he answered. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but you are not anyone I know, said Miss Giraffe. You must have come to the wrong address. And with that, she closed the door right in poor Dandelion's face. I'm Dandelion, he roared. You've made a mighty mistake. But there was no use knocking. The door stayed tight shut. Dandelion began walking back and forth, back and forth, up and down the long block. He paced. And as he paced, the sky grew dark. And then a sudden gust of wind sprang up and blew away his beautiful bouquet. Oh. And his snappy cap flew off. And to make matters worse, it began to rain in torrents. Dandelion dropped his cane and stood under a weeping willow tree. Oh no. But the rain poured down through the branches. Dandelion was soon soaking wet, and his curls came unfurled. He took off his jacket and he hung it on a willow branch. Luckily, he had kept on his sweater. <laughs> at last, the sun stopped. At last, the rain stopped, and the warm sunshine came beaming down. Dandelion decided to sit on Jennifer Giraffe's front steps until his mane was dry. While he sat there waiting, he spied three dandelion flowers under the bottom step. 
where they had been protected from the wind and the rain. He picked the dandelions and he said, I think I will try again. Hmm. And he rang the bell. Ding dong! Well, well, if it isn't our friend Dandelion at last, said Jennifer Giraffe. We've been waiting for you for the past hour. I do hope you weren't caught in that awful cloudburst. <laughs> Everyone at the party greeted him heartily. Later on, when all of her guests were enjoying tea and taffy, Jennifer Giraffe told Dandelion about the silly looking lion who had come to the door earlier. Dandelion almost spilled his cup of tea as he roared, reared back and he laughed uproariously. Ha ha ha, that was me. I was that silly looking lion. Miss Giraffe was so flustered that she got herself all tangled up in her long pearl necklace. Oh, oh, I do apologize for having closed the door on you, she said blushing. I promise never to do such a thing again. And I promise you I'll never again try to turn myself into a stylish dandy, said Dandelion as he sipped his tea. From now on, I'll always be just plain me. The end. Dandelion the Lion by Don Freeman. Gosh, doesn't he look fancy there? So different from what he really looked like. Snazzy. <laughs> the end. Don Freeman. Ah, oh, such a good book. But real lions don't drink tea, do they? Or eat taffy. It's too sticky on their sharp teeth. <laughs> All right, maybe we should, what, play with some shaky eggs? What do you think? Do you have something at home that we can shake, that you can shake? Debra, do you want to play? Yay. Maybe we can sing our chicken song. Do you remember it? <laughs> Here we go. Tick, 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 and lay a little egg for me. <laughs> tick, 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 and I want one for my tea. <laughs> I haven't had an egg since breakfast, and now it's half past three. So, tick, 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 and lay a little light for me. Yay, the chicken! All right, what else do we do? Anything else we can do with our eggs? Hmm, what about the ABC song? Do you remember it? <laughs> Let's start with A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? Yay for chickens and eggs. All right, I have another book, and it's about another lion. It's not a real lion again. My third book is a real lion. This book is by Rosemary Wells, who did the Max and Ruby books. But long ago, she was writing books about kids, and not animals, and not rabbits. <laughs> and this one is a lion for Lewis. Lewis is there, and he's a little brother. Let's see what you think. I wonder how, how this book might be an old one too, as far as dates go. 1982. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so good. All right, see, there's brothers and sisters. I'll be the mother, said Sophie. And I'll be the father, said George. What can I be, asked Lewis. You can be the baby, said George. All right, said Lewis. Lewis was fed and changed and put to bed. 
Now can I be the father? asked Louis. Or but the mother? That's over, said Sophie. I'm a doctor now. And I'm the head nurse, said George. But what about me? What shall I be? asked Louis. You can be sick, said Sophie. All right, said Louis. George gave Louis ten shots. <laughs> Sophie bandaged him up. And then they gave him some medicine and put him to bed. Hmm. Now can I be the doctor? asked Louis, or the nurse? That's over, said Sophie. I'm a princess now. And I'm a prince, said George. Can I be something? said Louis. Stay down there, Louis, and, and hold this tight, said George. All right, said Louis. Where are they putting him? Down the stairs, I guess, huh? Oh, Louis held it for a long time. A long, long time. And then he shouted, I'm coming back now. I want to be the king, said Louis. We need a maid, said Sophie. You can be the maid, said George. No, said Louis. Louis went far, far away to the darkest corner of the attic, and he watched the rain. Watching Louis was a lion. It didn't move. Maybe it's dead, said Louis, and he tickled it. Tickle, 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 tickle. It was only a lion suit. Louis put it on and zipped it up. Then Louis shouted, help, I've been eaten by a lion. Silly, said George. Nonsense, said Sophie. Louis stepped forward. Help, shouted Sophie. Don't eat us, screamed George. Louis in the lion crept closer and closer. Are you in there, Louis? yelled George. Can you hear us, Louis? yelled Sophie. Inside, Louis growled. Stop him, Louis, said Sophie. Bite him from the inside, Louis, said George. I'll try, squeaked Louis. <laughs> So Lewis swatted and kicked, and the lion roared. And Lewis pummeled and pounded and thumped and bumped inside the lion until the lion gave up, and Lewis popped out, shouting, I'm the king. Oh, Lewis, said Sophie and George, where did that lion come from? He's mine, said Lewis. The end. A Lion for Lewis by Rosemary Wells. Huh, that lion was living in Lewis's attic. Hmm, hmm. That lion suit, anyway. It's fun to dress up, isn't it? Very fun. Yay. All right, what else do we have? I have, we have a clapping rhyme we could do maybe with your two big hands. We have to clap like this. It's clapping, rolling, shaking, patting. Ready? Clap, clap, clap your hands as slowly as you can. Clap, clap, clap your hands as quickly as you can. <laughs> then what? Roll, roll, roll your hands as slowly as you can. Roll, roll, roll your hands as quickly as you can. And then what? Shake, shake, shake your hands as quickly as you can. Oh, I did it the backwards way. Shake, 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 shake as slowly as you can. And then pat, pat, pat your head as slowly as you can. Slowly. Pat, pat, pat your head as quickly as you can. Ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. 
I'm good. <laughs> All right, we'll see what I can get through here. What time is it? Oh my gosh. Let's see what we can tolerate. This is a book that's a California lion, and it's a real lion. It's not a made-up lion, and it's called a puma. So sometimes lions that live in other places have different names. There are the African lions with the big manes, and there are pumas, which are also called mountain lions, which are also called cougars. So they've got all sorts of names. I don't know why. But this book talks about them as pumas, and it's called Puma Dreams. It's by Tony Johnston, and Jim LaMarche, LaMarche did the pictures. Look at her. Hmm. 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 Puma Dreams. Here we go. Tell me if you think this looks like California. Oh, look at those clouds. Hmm. Do you see puma faces in the clouds? My gran says everybody needs at least one dream. Mine is to see a puma. Gran, Graham calls that a long dream for it may not ever happen. She says pumas are elusive as a handful of wind. Hmm. That their numbers are dwindling, getting smaller and smaller. Some are hunted down. Some are forced from the land when people move in, so they keep shy of people and to themselves, quiet like secrets. See that one hiding? Hard to even see that one. Hmm. Near here, years ago, a puma showed up by a horse corral, stalking, stalking supper, and somebody spotted one down our canyon dozing in an old oak limb. A neighbor says puma kittens once were hiding in his barn. But me, I've never seen one. I want to before they are gone. It's summer now and the grass is dry. The hills are puma colored. This time of year, my dream wakes up and roams my mind. I make a plan, animals, love the tang of salt, like kids love sweet. I'll place a salt lick on a hill close to our house where I can watch it until the cows, I can watch it till the cows come home. That's a saying of Graham's. I'll fix on that salt lick when I can. I hope if I'm patient and a little lucky, I'll see my puma. A salt lick is a big chunk of salt. It is like the size of a bucket, or bigger maybe, and it's a big square, and it's for animals. One damp morning, fog swallows the hills and creeps through the trees, slow and thick like a mystery. Graham and I journey, jounce down to the feed barn in her old truck. I invest my allowance money in a salt lick, 50 pounds, like me. We jounce back and juggle the salt from the pickup. Struggle with the salt from the pickup, plunk. And then we grin at each other and we lick it for luck. <laughs> Looks like a giant ice cube, doesn't it? But it's all salt, like the salt you use in a salt shaker. But animals like salt too and they need it, just like us. Now I wait for a puma. It may take days or years or never. But you don't give up on dreams, Graham says. Easy dreams aren't worth a pin or a pickle. Oh, I watch for a puma to come out to the salt lick. I imagine that big cat slipping through our wheat field on whisper feet, slow, oh, slow like fog, but I never see one. I imagine it as it prowls the dark with owls, but I never see one. I imagine snow dusting my puma as it hunts in the darkest hours. Still no luck. Hmm. Let's see. 
Days go by, months. Other animals come and mark the lick with their tongues. Deer and cattle and elk. Finches sign it with their tiny beaks. Peck, 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 peck. And roadrunners who enjoy admiring themselves in the mirrors of Graham's truck. Roadrunners. Oh yeah, those are maybe some coyotes. What else is here? An elk? Some deer? There's that roadrunner. Hmm. Hmm. A small rain turns our road to mud. When it dries, I see, I almost see a puma. There are cat tracks there, as big as hands. My dream is close, but far. I make myself a puma stick for when Graham and I walk the hills. I whittle a small puma for a handle. After many walks from the rub of my hand, the little puma smooths and shines. Hmm. It's a nice place to walk. She's using her knife to whittle this carving, this wooden carving with her knife. She's looking at pictures from a book to see what she should make it look like. Time passes, and time, and time. Our salt lick is worn down by many tongues, but no pumas that I have seen. Graham says things happen when you aren't looking the, when you are looking the other way. No puma. Hmm. <clears throat> One early morning, I am eating oatmeal, my back to the Salt Lake Hill. My skin begins to prickle. Something is about to happen. Something tells me to turn around. So I do, slowly. <gasps> and down, down there, there is my long dream, golden in the rising sun, warily checking the salt. It does not lick it. It just circles around it, head up, maybe sniffing <laughs> to know who has been there before, maybe to know who is still near. I can't speak, so I just point. Graham beams. The puma is beautiful, partly because pumas may soon disappear, partly because it just is. When it goes away, I keep looking at the place. For me, the puma will always glimmer there, a great golden ghost. From the work of many tongues, the salt sculpture is smaller now. So I lug it home. It's a doorstop for my room. My gram says everybody needs at least one dream. My first one came true. Soon a new dream takes its place. I want to help pumas stay in the world and be safe. I don't know how to do that, but I will find a way. The end. Mm -hmm. Puma Dreams by Tony Johnston and Jim LaMarche. Very nice. It's a California lion, right? <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to run into one. Maybe from a long ways away to look at one. Have you ever seen one, Deborah? No, me neither. Very interesting. All right, can we read one more silly story and then do our beanbag song? This one is by uh, John Aggie, who does uh, many, many silly, silly books. So. This one happens to be about lions, and this is the one that made me want to read lion books this week. It's called Lion Lessons by John Aggie. He wrote the words, and he also um, drew the pictures. Hmm. Classes for all ages. Baking, 
learn the violin, tutoring, karate, Spanish, yoga, lion lessons, seven easy steps. It's not easy getting your lion diploma. I know, I took lessons. My teacher was a pro. There are seven steps to becoming a lion, he said. But first, we must stretch. We did the upward lion, the downward lion, the upside down lion, the rolling lion, the flying lion, and we shook our manes. Step one was looking fierce. Watch me, said the lion. You bare your claws, you gnash your teeth, and you show your fangs. I tried out my three most frightening poses. The lion wasn't impressed. Step two was roaring. It's simple, said the lion. Take a deep breath and roar as loud as you can into this microphone. Roar! 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 I took a deep breath Roar! Roar! and roared as loud as I could. Needs work, said the lion. Step three was choosing what to eat. The lion showed me the menu. Fresh today, free range muskrats, wombats, organic iguana, grass fed new, all you can eat antelope, sloth, prairie raised anteater, and Wild warthog. Are there any specials, I asked, you know, like spaghetti? The lion growled, we don't eat spaghetti. Step four was prowling around. We crept through the woods, trying to be invisible. We hid in the bushes. I can see your tail, said the lion. We hid behind trees. Your tail, said the lion. I can still see it. Step five was sprinting. Do you see that tree, said the lion. I looked around. You mean this little one right here? No, said the lion. That big one on that faraway hill. I'll meet you there in five minutes. It took me an hour. You need to hit the gym, said the lion. Step six was pouncing. It's simple, said the lion. You get a running start and then you jump on, your, on that lady. But I'll scare her to death. Ah, oh, that's the idea, said the lion. <coughs> so I got a running start and I pounced. Oh, what a cute little kitty cat, said the lady. Are you lost? Meow, I said. The lion checked my scores. This is not very promising. Step seven was looking out for your friends. Right away, I spotted a kitten. Friend or foe, said the lion. That's easy, I said, friend. What about that dog? I let out a ferocious I bared my claws, I gnashed my teeth, I pawed the ground and I shook my mane, and then I sprinted across the field as fast as I could and pounced exactly like a, well, you know, a lion. Bravo, said the lion. And that's how I got my diploma. Lion diploma. I'm very proud of it. But now the neighborhood cats won't leave me alone. The end. Lion Lessons by John Aggie. Rawr! Rawr! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's time for a beanbag song. Oh, I've kept you so long today. So we're going to get our bean bags.
Remember, you can use other stuff. If you don't have a bean bag, you could use a stuffy. You could use a bag of beans or rice. You could use a sock. You could use a shoe. You could use a bag of cereal. You could use so many things. Let's see. So we need our bodies tall and long. We need number... What? Number nine, right? There we go. Go! Oh, that's not it. Set number ten. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. Shake, shake, shake my feelings. Oh my gosh. Are we shaking our sillies out with our bean bags? Ooh. We are not. <laughs> I put the wrong one in. Let's try again. I wonder why number nine didn't work. <laughs> oh gosh. Foibles, foibles. Go, we need number, now we need number nine. Oh gosh, there it is. Okay, we're gonna Woo. start this song okay. off by putting the bean bag on your shoulder. On your shoulder. Take that bean bag, put it on your shoulder. Keep it on your shoulder, that's the way we Your knee! Take that oh, your knee bag, put it on your knee. Keep it on your knee and that's the way we Your hand! That's the bag. Put it on your hand and keep it on your hand and that's the way we Your head! That's the bag. Put it on your head and keep it on your head and that's the way we Your elbow! That's the bag. Put it on your elbow. Keep it on your elbow. That's the way we Your neck! So many, so many good ones. We have them in English and Spanish, real lions, fake lions, California lions, African lions, so many. And there's a lot of holidays coming up too that we could read about. So maybe next week or the next couple weeks we'll be reading some things that are holiday books. So, all right, friends, we miss you. We love you. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>